hello everyone. Today is April 13th and we are in the New Testament, book of Luke, chapter 11, verse, verses 29 through 54. And here it reads, As the crowds were increasing, he began to say, This generation is a wicked generation. It seeks for a sign, and yet no sign will be given to it but the sign of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. And that is the, the three days, three nights in the mouth of, of the uh, big fish. Uh, the queen of the south will rise up with the men of this generation at the judgment and condemn them because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, something greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will stand up with this generation at the judgment and condemn it. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it away in a cellar, nor under a basket, but on the lampstand, so that those who enter may see the light. The eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is clear, your whole body also is full of light. But when it is bad, your body also is full of darkness. Then watch out that the light in you is not darkness. If therefore your whole body is full of light with no dark part in it, it will be wholly illumined as when the lamp illumines you with its rays. Now when he has spoken, a Pharisee asked him to have lunch with him, and he went in and reclined at the table. When the Pharisee saw it, he was surprised that he had not first ceremonially washed before the meal. But the Lord said to him, now you Pharisees clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but inside of you, you are full of robbery and wickedness. You foolish ones, did not he who made the outside make the inside also? But give that which is within as charity, and then all things are clean for you. But woe to, the fair, woe to you Pharisees, for you pay tithe of mint and rue and every kind of garden herb, and yet disregard justice and the love of God. But these are the things you should have done without neglecting the others. Woe to you Pharisees, for you love the chief seats in the synagogues and the respectful greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you, for you are like concealed tombs and the people walk over them are unaware of it. So real quick, that's just that the Pharisees may look good on the outside, but they're really corrupt and dirty on the inside. Continuing verse 45, one of the lawyers said to him in reply, teacher, when you say this, you insult us too. But he said, woe to you lawyers as well, for you weigh men down with burdens hard to bear, while you yourselves will not even touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you, for your you build the tombs of the prophets, and it was your fathers who killed them. So you are witnesses and approve the deeds of your fathers because it was they who killed them and you built their tombs. For this reason, also the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and apostles and some of them they will kill and some they will persecute so that the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world may be charged against his generation from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who was killed between the altar and the house of God. Yes, I tell you, it shall be charged against this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourselves did not enter, and you hindered those who were entering. So, real quick, that's probably more along the lines of the lawyers are, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, um, issuing or uh, prosecuting when need be those who violate the law. So they are basically in support of the laws that the uh, their ancestors had put into place, which are unjust laws and laws that are not uh, what God desired, basically. So, and that's, of course, not every law. The, the laws of God are different than the laws of man. And these lawyers are, are there to make sure that those laws are followed. And that's why he's on them as a part of the problem and the hypocritical people that that are 
in the hierarchy, the upper echelon of the people of Israel. Uh, continuing with verse 53, when he left there, the scribes and the Pharisees began to be very hostile and to question him closely on their on many subjects, plotting against him to catch him in something he might say. All right. So that is the end of April 13th. Thank you. God bless. Hope to see you soon.